Hey there guys, Rick here and welcome to another Q&A session. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to include a few more questions than normal and make the answers a little bit less in depth just for this session. I kind of like the in-depth uh, Q&A sessions but just for this one I'm going to uh, keep them short and simple and to the point. So. I'm going to answer the ones that have been uh, posted on my Facebook fan page. Uh, make sure you like my Facebook fan page and you can get involved and post all sorts of uh, questions and whatever you like within reason. Okay, so um, I'm not going to answer all of them. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, this is a good question. Hugo Leonardo. Not so guitar related, but how do you stay motivated to keep following your diet workout plan? I've been working out since last year and I like to lift big weights. Good man. I've been working out since... No, I've just read that. <laughs> However, with, without consistency and proper diet, it's all useless. How do you keep focused to get shredded? Sorry for the English and long question. Firstly, don't ever apologise. I always appreciate people. If it's not your first language, you know, it's fantastic that you're, you're trying it. So. Brilliant, and it sounds great to me, and it, re it reads well. So, let me get to the point. Motivation, extremely important. Um, I had to mo motivate myself every single day, right from when I was a 20 stone mess. You know, those first few days, the first few weeks, it was hard, seriously. You know, when you're on that exercise bike and you've got a huge fat gut, and a pair of breasts swinging about, you know, it's, it's horrible, it really is, uh, but you've got to stay focused, you've got to have that goal, for me it's a personal thing for myself, I knew that I'd be letting myself down if I didn't stay motivated and keep pushing, so once I've locked it into place, the goal that, um, that I've got in mind, I'm doing it, and it makes no difference doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter how uncomfortable I feel, doesn't matter how uh, stressed out I get, uh, how much I feel I'm not moving in the right direction, I know all of that is a mental thing and I just put it to one side and just keep going. Uh, however, I used, I have a lot of things to keep me motivated, um, a lot of great YouTube channels that I follow Guys like Physiques of Greatness, Chris Jones, you know, the Hodge twins, just fantastic. Uh, Omar Isuf, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Great advice there, so those guys are, are fantastic. And there's loads of them. So those guys, uh, but loads of other videos, you know, on YouTube. YouTube has really been a massive part of, of uh, my progress, you know, a huge part of it. Uh, it's part of my routine, get up in the morning, I get up really early in the morning, watch some videos to get me inspired and then that's it, I've got the day sorted. So it's an amazing time, you know, there's a lot of motivational stuff out there that will really, really help you stay focused. So that's one of the ways, excuse me guys, that's one of the ways that I did it. Uh, but it's not just YouTube, this is long winded isn't it, I wanted to keep this short but it's, it's always difficult when you, you, you have a question like that. Um, it's not just that, it's what's up here, you know, you've, you've got to have your goal and you've got to mean it, you know, it's pointless being half-hearted about things, you know, if you understand where you need to get to, you, you're going to do it no matter what, no matter what, um, and for me the journey has only just begun really, so I'm looking forward to see, seeing how it's going to progress. And, you know, if you can do the same thing, um, or the only advice I can give you is to have that goal and stick to it, be true to yourself, you know, and believe in yourself. Um, so those are some of my thoughts on that. Hopefully I've answered the question. Okay, let's move on. Uh, right, Tom Martin asks, what happened to the Sir? There's a few other guys that have asked this, in fact, loads of other guys, you know, what happened to the Sir? I sold my Sir guitars basically because I needed a change. I needed a change. I felt like um, I needed to go back to playing for one Ibanez guitars. You've got to bear in mind I've been an Ibanez guitar uh, player pr 
pretty much, well not from day one, but pretty much right back from the early days. Uh, and I've always loved them, always loved Ibanez guitars. They can be a little bit hit and miss. Uh, I've played some incredible Ibanez guitars, I've also played some not so incredible Ibanez guitars, but for me it's just, it just feels like home, you know? And you know, a lot of things were going on in my life that, I've, that of course you guys know about, that um, you know, I was making a lot of changes and part of that change for me was going back to something that felt right for me. You know, uh, and I've always been, I've always loved Strats too, I've always been a Strat guy, so, you know, Strats are part of my sound now, and for me, the Candy Apple Red Strat, the 87 Strat, is, the tone is amazing. I will do a video, and uh, a, a being all the guitars and stuff I've got, because I know you guys want to know about the rig rundown and everything else, but I will get to that. But yeah, that's what happened to the Sirs, I sold them and I moved on. I needed a change. You know, people change, people move on. It's not the end of the world. So, that's that question. Uh, let's move on. Uh, okay, this is a good one. Danielle de, ba de Batista asks, what distinguishes a bad guitarist from a good one? Knowledge of scales, modes and so on? What indispensable knowledge should a guitarist know, like, for example, the pentatonic scale? Thanks, Rick, you legend. <laughs> Cheers, dude. What distinguishes a bad guitarist from a good one? For me, um, I mean, I don't like to call guitarists to separate them by saying they're bad or good. It's just that down to what I prefer, to personal preference. Um, but for me, it's all about being able to control the instrument. And what I mean by that is being able to play uh, to express your feelings from, or communicate your feelings from one person to another. That's what playing a musical instrument should be about, no matter whether you're playing guitar, violin, piano, or whether you're an artist, or whether you're a writer, or whatever. It's about communicating your experiences, you know. Um, and a good guitar player should be able to do that and do it well. Uh, sorry. Um, so that's fundamentally, that's the issue here. Uh, however, when you're talking on a technical level, things that stand out to me uh, that make guitar players good or separate them from the rest of the pack are things like controlling intonation, controlling string bends, vibrato, um, no choice phrasing, you know. Um, notice I'm not mentioning anything about speed here. Speed is just one tiny little part of the whole picture, you know. Speed for me is irrelevant, because uh, I noticed early on, back in the early days, I used to get the, the old, you know, records, the Shrapnel Guys records, and uh, I'd put them on, play them, listen to them be like, wow, that's incredible. But then after like the third listen or something, it, it lost its impact. And um, I'm not saying it, I didn't enjoy it, well, I didn't enjoy it as much, but the impact of it sort of diminished. Uh, however, great control, great phrasing and everything else, that's something that, is, that stays, it's continuous. In fact, it actually gets better. I appreciate great solos and great guitar players more over time and that tells me that that's, that is the most important thing for me at least. You know, there's nothing wrong with speed or anything like that but a lot of players can get far too hung up on it and it's just, it's nothing really. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question there. Um, okay, here's one, Hardcore Reigns. If I had muscles like yours would I be able to play like that? Simple answer, no. Let's move on. Uh, this is a good one. Matt Kidney, in the early stages of getting your technique and speed together, did you make your goals quantifiable so you could clearly see progress? And can you give some examples of how you did this in conjunction to musical application? Um, no, I didn't. I just got my head down and got on with it to be honest with you. Um, even though back in one of the uh, previous Q&A videos I talked about um, 
problem solving. That was the most important thing, but in terms of goals, quantifiable goals that I actually was able to say, right, I've reached this level, I've reached this, no, no, not at all. I just, as I say, got my head down and got on with it, dealt with the problems as they occurred. You know, and for me that helped um, rather, than st rather than saying, right, I've got to this stage, got to that stage, got to that stage. I just forgot about results in a way and just concentrated on problem solving and dealing with the problem as it occurred. That way, I, you know, it's like viewing Everest, you know, you don't look up to, to what you've got to achieve, you just get your head down and get on with it. So, so that's kind of how, how I've done it. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, moving on. Uh, probably got time for one more here. Okay. Dave Harris, which guitar player influenced you to start playing? Um, that's a difficult one because there were guitar players that did influence me, uh, but there were guitar players that changed my life as a player. Um, back in the early days, uh, I used to listen to bands, like oh, I'm still a huge Depeche Mode fan, I think they're amazing. Uh, but at the time I was into bands like The Cure and The Smiths and stuff like that when I first started, but I, I, I moved on quite quickly from that. Um, one of the guys that really, really influenced me was Nuno Betancourt from Extreme. I remember my brother brought a cassette back and, uh, and he showed me this and I was like, why have you brought that? And he said, check this guitar player out. Put it in, played it. And I think it was the solo to get the funk out. I just could not believe it. Just the whole thing, I was just gobsmacked. Then he played me some of the stuff, little Jack Horney, you know, all of those. Um, and I was just, it blew me away completely. So Nuno Betancourt was one of the ones that changed my life as a player. Probably the, the guy that had the most impact on me as a player though was Joe Satriani. Um, it was magical. When I heard, uh, my, again, my brother, he's responsible for a lot of this. Um, he played me Flying in a Blue Dream, the album, and that was it. I was just, I was gone. Heard that album and <laughs> that was it. I just, it was like, I was flying in a blue dream every single day, you know, and that helped me progress too. So a lot of progression is not just about getting your, like I said in the previous question, getting your head down and doing the work. You have to be inspired and like the first question, you have to be motivated to do it. So that just gave me so much motivation, you know, it's what I wanted to do. As soon as I heard it, I was like, man, this is incredible music. And just the way he phrased his control and everything else, just, it got me, you know. Uh, the solos on some of the tracks too, just, I remember, because I used to live in my own world, have my Walkman on, um, some of you young guys may not know what that is, but I used to have my Walkman on and uh, there would be moments in solos that I'd be, oh, I'd struggle to, to I'd lose my uh, rhythm walking because it affected me so much. Uh, so yeah, to cut a long story short, those guys. Um, there have been other guys since then, but in the early days it was most certainly uh, Nuno and Joe Satriani. So yeah, there we have it. Okay, I better wrap this up. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this Q&A. Uh, I'll probably go back to doing a bit more in-depth stuff next time, but I wanted to include a few more questions here. It's, I have to say it's really difficult uh, because I've had so many different questions uh, both on Facebook, email, you know, uh, YouTube, loads of different places saying, please, you know, answer this question. So, you know, I'll do my best to answer all of your questions uh, and I'm going to keep this series going for as long as I possibly can because it's, it's a great way for me to communicate with you guys other than playing. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I will catch up with you guys next time. Cheers.